When you are a 2D artist, perfection is always something you seek. And apart from perfecting your understanding and application of anatomy, light, shadow, and other fundamentals, one very important thing, most notably when it comes to 2D digital art, is the post-production editing of your drawings and digital paintings. While we see mediums and varnish used in oil paintings to bring out their true colors and give them a boost in their appearance, we have, in digital art, plenty of options and software to help us do the same. For this purpose, we thought it would be a great idea to compare between one of the most popular and most known software used to edit pictures post their production, whether 2D art or photography. With that said, let's jump into the exploration of GIMP versus Lightroom. If you want to learn more about GIMP and Lightroom, we chose two amazing courses for you today that will help you do just that. The first course by Chris Parker, learn how to use GIMP to edit your photos like a pro. The course is a beginner project-based class. You'll first start with the fundamentals, like how to install GIMP, how to set up and get accustomed to the interface, personal preferences, settings, etc. You're going to see how to use layers, layer masks, paint tools, and everything in between. The second course is Adobe Lightroom Masterclass by Nigel Danson, a professional landscape photographer. You'll learn new ways to edit your photo creatively using the tools that Lightroom provides and how to edit the settings of your photo, such as lighting, curves, contrast, highlights, and so on and so forth. In order to give mood and tell a story through your pictures, using our code, links in the description. First, GIMP. GIMP, or more specifically, GNU Image Manipulation Program, is a software first developed by Spencer Kimball and Peter Mattis. This software was intended for retouching and modifying raster graphics, you know, PNG, JPG, and JPEG images, as opposed to vector graphics, something made for photographers more than anything. This software is free and open source, meaning the source code for it is out there and you can pick it up and add new tools and options if you're tech savvy. The software can be used on Mac OS, Linux, and of course, Windows. Although the software has a couple of drawing tools, it's not made for drawing or digital painting. Trying to use it for such purposes can be a losing battle. In fact, we explore this in our comparison of Krita versus GIMP, so feel free to check it out. Now that we know a bit about GIMP, let's explore Lightroom a bit. Lightroom, or more professionally, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, is an image editing software in all of its glory. It's very laser-focused on fine-tuning your photos with advanced cataloging in mind. The software is not only available on the usual Mac OS and Windows, but also iOS and Android. It comes in the format of apps that you can download and use on your phone and tablet. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Lightroom, however, is not free, and it comes as a part of the Creative Cloud subscription, which has many different types and prices. However, the mobile version is free, albeit having a premium version with extra goodies. It all depends on whether you think that's worth it for you or not. Now that we know a bit more about the two software, let's explore them on a deeper level. Let's start off with GIMP. When you open GIMP, you have a regular 2D software interface with a toolbar on the left that presents different tools, such as brushes, selection tools, magic wand, etc, etc. On the lower end of that, you would have your brush customization options if you select your brush tool, or text customization if you've selected your text tool. The right side has a docker that contains different brush shapes, textures, and text styles. And on the bottom right, you have your layers and different layer options, as well as channels and paths dialogues. The software also has multiple themes from dark to light that you can choose from depending on what suits you best. And finally, we can't forget the canvas space in the middle where you can work on your pictures. 
This, however, doesn't mean that the software isn't customizable in its presentation. GIMP actually allows you to change almost everything about the interface to fit your needs. However, it's much more of a less user-friendly program, as you would need to do a lot of looking and searching for things, unless you're following a tutorial. Let's now move on to Lightroom. Lightroom, upon opening, is like no other 2D program. Since the software works as an image organization tool, you'll be first met with the library module, or simply the library section, where you can organize your photos. Once you import your pictures, you can go to the develop module, explore your presets, and browse your edit history. On the right side of your develop module, you have all of your image editing tools, like cropping, resizing, healing, etc. The other modules have purposes, but they're less significant. The map module puts your images in a map, the book module puts them in a book, the print module, well, does just that, and the web modules puts them in a web gallery. The options available directly in the modules, dockers, and panels are quite simplistic in comparison to the ones in the menu bar, or those that can be accessed by right-clicking on specific panels. This keeps the software compressed and less intimidating. Lightroom, with its interface, does more hand-holding as it guides you through the process of editing your photos. Now that we know how the software presents themselves, let's explore the tools they give and how they are operated. Starting off with GIMP, when you import your images, you have plenty of tools and options to work with. You have your usual but valuable selection tools in all shapes and types. You have your painting and drawing brushes, healing and cloning tools, smudging, blurring, sharpening, dodging and burning, and so many more. You also have a variety of tools for all of your transformation purposes, like rotating and cropping and even wrapping and 3D transforming. And of course, we can't forget color tools. You have your levels and curves, your color balance, as well as saturation and exposure. GIMP also has many, many filters, such as blur and distort. With all of these tools, GIMP provides you with the ability to remove backgrounds, skin retouching, fix a red eye, or remove eye bags, and even put on makeup on your subject. Your limit is the sky, and the ways you can apply this to your image are endless, especially with the many many filters available. It's all about you, your creativity, and skill. Now let's move on to Lightroom. With Lightroom, as you import your image from the library, you can also add other images and organize them in that module, according to your needs. As you move from module to module, the panels or dockers will change according to what you need. Just like GIMP, with Lightroom you can remove shadows or red eyes and all those classic image manipulation operations. The tools Lightroom has are countless. For example, you have your clarity tool and also your sharpness tool for when you feel like your picture is way too blurry. The vignette tool can add dark corners to your artwork and make it a lot more dramatic. The tint, hue, saturation and luminance sliders can take your art to the next level. You can also create presets, meaning filters, or import them. And with the countless tutorials on YouTube, you can make your image look like it's from a 90s movie or have it look photographed and developed using blurry film. You can make things glow or look somber. One great thing about Lightroom is that it applies non-linear or non-destructive editing, meaning that it won't ruin your image forever and you can actually go back and forth in your editing history. This way, you can go crazy and completely experimental on your photos and not fear losing the original image. Unfortunately, this option isn't available in GIMP, so be careful. For every software ever, there is a learning curve for sure, but Lightroom is definitely built with photographers in mind. It has a much more streamlined workflow and much better designed user interface and user experience. 
GIMP, on the other hand, while familiar in its interface and tools, as it resembles many software such as Krita and Photoshop, still has you looking and digging into it to find the tools you need. With that said, there are many tutorials and blog posts about both software that you'll soon find yourself accustomed to the two software quickly, provided that you put in the time and effort, of course. Let's put this simply. You are a well-established photographer and want something that not only can help you edit your pictures easily, but also organize them for you and provides you with raw image processing as well as non-destructive editing. In this case, Lightroom is your best bud. But if you happen to be a beginner or a hobbyist and you cannot afford to be paying a subscription but still want a software that can help you edit your images, maybe add a pixel or blur effect here and there, you have GIMP by your side for that. With that said, we hope you enjoyed our comparison of the two software. Make sure to let us know which one you prefer in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.